And joining us right now, first on Squawk Box, is Occidental CEO Vicki Hollop. Vicki, good morning. Good morning, Becky, and thank you for having me on today. Oh, thanks for coming on with us. Um, Vicki, why do you want this asset? What, what happened? How long have you been looking at Crown Rock, and why do you think it makes sense? Well, it makes sense for a lot of reasons, beginning with it's a part of our transformation. About 10 years ago, we started transforming our company by exiting out of the lower margin assets that we had here domestically and internationally. Exiting out of the lower margin assets definitely improved our portfolio and got us to the point where we now have the, the best assets we've ever had as a company. And in fact, it also lowered our geopolitical risk in that we went, went from a company that had 50% production in the U.S. to 80% production in the U.S. The acquisition of Crown Rock further strengthens us in, in terms of adding um, uh, incredible inventory. Um, they actually have um, uh, 1,700 well locations that will add to our inventory. 1,250 of those wells are less than $60 break even. So the inventory is important to us, uh, but also it's highly accretive to our free cash flow. And that's important for our value proposition for our shareholders because of the fact that for the last few years, we've been delivering value to our investors by increasing value per share through debt reduction and the repurchase of shares. Now, this uh, acquisition, because of the free cash flow accretion, adds um, a step change difference in terms of the value per share for our investors. Uh, that's important. And then the third thing is that, um, that it provides scale, uh, scale to our Midland Basin operations. And it's important for, for people to know that, uh, that the Permian Basin is a huge basin. It's uh, the, the aerial extent of it is about the size of North Dakota. So when you consider that and you actually break down the basin, there are three big sub-basins. It's the Middle Basin, the Central Basin Platform, and the Delaware Basin. Uh, in the Delaware Basin, we had the scale we needed, and uh, we've been able to use that scale to, to improve and optimize our operations there. We didn't have enough scale, we felt, in the Midland Basin. So having this acquisition come along uh, to us and have the opportunity to do this, again, is the high free cash flow accretion, it's the scale, it's the inventory, and all of that has helped now for us also to step up our uh, dividend. We've been, we will, uh, in our April um, uh, dispersion, we will actually pay a 22% higher dividend than what we've been paying. And that 22% increase is because of this acquisition. And on a go forward basis, this acquisition actually enables us to uh, sustainably grow our dividend at a more meaningful pace. Uh, so okay. we're excited about all of that. Let, let's talk a little bit about that. I was trying to figure out the, uh, the dividend increase as a result of this. You say it's because the cash flow uh, being stronger as a result of this acquisition. Why not use that cash flow to pay down the debt uh, more quickly? Because you all have done a good job of, of paying down the debt. I think you've paid down about 50 percent of the Anadarko debt that you had taken on. But why not pay down even more of it because you still have more debt than most of your peers and, and, and then with the addition of this, uh, this new debt that will increase too. With the Anadarko debt, we're actually uh, about $2 billion less than we were on a pro forma basis um, when we closed on the deal. So we are still working on that to get that down to uh, around $15 billion. We still have that same goal. So with the debt that we'll pick up now, our goal is to get it down to below uh, $15 billion. Um, the reason uh, that we can grow the dividend um, is because we're continuing to upgrade our portfolio. We do have, as a result of this acquisition, there are some assets uh, here domestically that we feel we can now divest of. And it's that divestiture and exiting out of those assets, which are not key to our portfolio, given the acquisition of Crown Rock, uh, that we'll use those funds to pay down the debt. And our goal is to do that within the next year. I see it's going to be $9.1 in new debt that you are issuing as a result of, of this purchase. Um, if you take that into account with the existing debt you still have from Anadarko and those divestitures, what's the debt picture look like overall? The debt picture in, in three years, over the next two to three years, is actually about what it would have been without the this acquisition, because we'll use the combination of cash flow and those divestitures to work the debt down. Uh, so the metrics are going to be about the same as they would have been. 
Uh, ExxonMobil made a big bid for Pioneer. That was a $60 billion deal. And a lot of people speculated that that would kick off a huge uh, round of acquisitions, especially when it came to the Permian Basin, people looking for additional um, assets there. Is that what happened here, or were you already looking at this before the Exxon deal was announced? Well, we kicked off um, our acquisition efforts and our consolidation back with the Anadarko uh, mm -hmm. acquisition. So we weren't driven by what anybody else is doing. We're driven by what we believe to be the right path to further improve our portfolio. Uh, so this came up. Uh, we we continually look at opportunities. This came up at the perfect timing for us to, to get the scale, as I mentioned, that we need in the Midland Basin. It wasn't driven by what anybody else is doing.